So if you want to learn uh, what it is, what it takes to manage acute injuries, that's what we covered at the accelerator course. And if you've ever wondered, well, what's different about acute injuries versus chronic versus maintenance versus strength and conditioning? How do you manage acute injuries differently? That's what this podcast is sharing. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the podcast. Uh, welcome all new listeners and welcome back to those who have heard my content in the past. Today's podcast is very unique. Lessons learned from my most recent sports PT accelerator. I'm actually uh, live uh, at our San Diego location uh, between events, and I wanted to share the lessons from the attendees for myself um, and what we shared during this amazing event. So if you want to learn uh, what it is, what it takes to manage acute injuries, that's what we covered at the accelerator course. And if you've ever wondered, well, what's different about acute injuries versus chronic versus maintenance versus strength and conditioning? How do you manage acute injuries differently? That's what this podcast is sharing. That's what it's about. That's what this course was about. And I want to share um, the things behind the scenes that made this such a special event um, for so many reasons. And uh, before I do that, what, what's, uh, what is new in life? Uh, this Sports PT Accelerator has been life. <laughs> it has been a lot of work uh, to make this happen. And um, it's truly a dream. I think that uh, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're truly doing what you love, Life is really amazing, and uh, I appreciate every aspect of this. I love teaching. Um, I love uh, coaching. I love uh, bringing people up. I like pushing them uh, because I like people to do the same to me, and for that reason, I want to share that. And uh, this week has been really focused on self-development, um, what it is to bring up uh, this next generation of PTs. Uh, what is the focus? Uh, what do people need to be able to be successful, become sports experts, become uh, leading specialists in their community? And uh, uh, after, after uh, teaching this course, I learned a lot of things. And uh, uh, it was great to have the group of uh, attendees in the room. Uh, my wife got to join. Uh, at, at, she ca only came for power hour. Uh, <laughs> that was very, very convenient of her. Uh, but the rest of the attendees, let me let me frame this a little bit better. Um, for those of you who are new, new in my world, uh, you'll, you'll get something out of this. Um, for those who've been around, um, you, you'll understand a lot more. Um, but ultimately, we had a lot of people who've attended, sorry, who I yeah, actually have attended my previous courses, um, who've been to our facility, uh, who have been listening to the podcast for a while, uh, who've been following on, me on Instagram, who've been part of my journey for years. Um, when I was, uh, when I, when I started sports performance and I didn't have a physical location and I was going gym to gym, uh, we've had attendees uh, who've known me since then. So uh, it was really amazing to see multiple people come together and just be part of this, like, what's next? What's the next stage for me? What's the next journey? Where should I go? How do I manage this person? And uh, it truly feels like a community and it feels like a journey. So uh, for those of you who are listening, uh, who attended the event, I'm uh, super passionate about pushing you forward to what you need to do to take ownership of managing athletes at all levels, at all levels, not just orthopedic care, but the acute injury management side, the strength and conditioning side. Um, so great to have everybody together um, and uh, really just be part of each other's journey now because we had, I think, five or six students, um, third-year students, PT students, who were, they're, they're going to own it. Like this group, if you're a PT student listening now, good for you, because I wish I had this information so much earlier, so much earlier, because it would have changed my framework of how I approach clinical care. And I had five or six uh, PT students. Uh, we had somebody, I think the most experienced person in the room was uh, eight years. We had two years, we had two and a half years, we had eight months, we had three and a half years, and we had this full um, uh, spectrum. We also had a uh, track and field coach, very high level. Uh, Chris, if you're listening to this, um, it was amazing to have you in the course. Um, but what we had was a room full of people who were trying to figure out how do you manage an athlete um, <clears throat> in season, out of season, uh, pre-competition, in competition, uh, like 
all phases of a training cycle. And that is very different on how you manage these individuals during those time slots. And what we realized is orthopedic care clinically, we are pretty much four week to 16 week specialists. Like we can see somebody during those time slots and feel very comfortable. But what happens is if we get them from zero to four weeks, the same principles that happen from four to 16 don't necessarily apply. It's actually some of them are the opposite. And the ones who we want to take on beyond 16 weeks to strength and conditioning, we would love to take them out. But the problem is after talking to so many people, we don't know what to do with them. And having a track coach there who is, they map out, this individual maps out outcomes four years in advance, four years. They go out and then they make a mesocycle, huge four-year plan, and then break them down to one-year plans. And then they map out one year in four blocks. And it was funny having him in the course because he said, you know, um, wait, you guys are only doing six weeks? And we're like, that's really what we're doing. Maybe 12, maybe 18, 24 if we're lucky. And he said, uh, wow, that's just a snippet of what like an athlete's like timeline is. And we were like, exactly. And it was great for the attendees to be part of this and listen, all the PTs, the PT students, listen in on, I've been, I've been, I've worked in pro sports and I've, I've seen it happen. I know what it could, it can be. And this track coach who works at the Olympic level could also understand like, well, I mean, it just makes sense. And this person is also a client of mine. And so it was interesting because all the principles I'm, I'm teaching to the students, I do to this individual and their family, and he does to his athletes. But the missing piece is a lot of our PTs don't have the same framework, so they're hesitant to make these moves and challenges and, and push people to the next level. And it was refreshing to hear it from a, 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 a non-clinician-based community member who is like, we want it. We want all of these things. So I'm going to share the lessons learned. All right. Uh, number one. Uh, imposter syndrome is real, both in uh, as a student, as a new grad, uh, as a, an established clinician. Uh, the imposter syndrome is real, and what I mean by that is, uh, yeah, let me um, let me just try and let me, uh, yeah, I, I can do that. Um, yeah, that, that's that's not a problem. That's not going to be hard. Um, no, that knee pain's not that major. No, the surgery is going to be easy. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and you really don't. And you're like, <laughs> what? I don't even know what to do. But I, I did something right or I did something wrong. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. I'm, I'm just a fresh new grad or I'm only three years out. I've never seen this before. It's called imposter syndrome, right? You're, you're trying to show confidence to your patient or athlete. And you really don't know what to do next. And that's totally normal. That's okay. And imposter syndrome. Uh, we had somebody three years out who said, who acknowledged that they have imposter syndrome. So for the students out there, you're, you're okay. It's normal <laughs> and it does happen. And, um, you know, I think that at every stage, every level, there's a different devil. And at every stage, you are trying to figure out that next level. But the problem is, is that you're trying to jump so many levels. You're trying to go to the pros when you need to get some of the fundamentals down. And this course was hands down fundamentals. You got to just get the fundamentals, tackle down your timeline, tackle down your plan of care, tackle down all your tissue healing guidelines. And then you can get onto the like fun, sexy exercises and also the stuff. And I'll share more as we go. But ultimately, imposter syndrome is real and it's okay. You just got to conquer it as much as possible. Um, Number two, uh, I learned that uh, some people um, think that years of experience is what's going to make you a good clinician, and that's not the case. I brought up the concept of, well, what if you compared 5,000 hours of your own clinical care and compare that to 5,000 hours of mentored care? Very different world, very different world. And why? Non-mentored hours are almost linear. You, you treat somebody, you reflect on them, and you have to wait for the outcome to get that, to move on to the next person. You're like, oh, I, I didn't apply it to that person. I'm going to try it to this one. 
And then that one's like, oh, that one was good. Try to apply it to the next one. Ah, that didn't work out. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit. It's very linear, very, very sequential versus a mentored hour is, hey, I wouldn't have done that. And here's why. You have to look at A, B, and C behind the scenes, map it out, plan it, make sure that they go, you don't do too aggressive or too conservative. Try that out. And if that doesn't work, try this one. And what happens is actually you don't apply that just to the next one. You apply it to all the concepts. And then it's actually like this spider web simultaneous style of learning. Now you're applying it to 20 different clients or patients a month. Then that 20 goes on to 40 or 60 within the same quarter. And then you're applying to 4,000 over a couple of years. That's very different than let me just try and figure it out. So uh, number one, imposter syndrome is real. Number two, uh, treatment hours don't equal uh, growth hours. Um, let's see how it goes. Are you a let's see how it goes type of a PT? And what I mean by that, and there were several people in the room. Now, I have to admit, the person with the most experience acknowledged this themselves. They said, uh, they had eight years experience, and they said, you know, I find myself at eight years still in seeing myself as a, let me, let's see how it goes type of PT. And that's very real. And I appreciate the honesty because you got you to say it. You got you to acknowledge that, that that's your barrier. No con ed course is going to fix that. No ankle or knee or taping or cupping or baseball or any type of con ed is going to fix that. You being aware, oh my gosh, I actually don't plan. I just like, let's try it out. And um, a let's see how it goes. PT literally comes into work, had a great weekend on Monday, comes in and see their schedule for the first time at 7.45 for their eight o'clock shift. Eight o'clock comes around. They're like, oh, I got a total knee. I got a rotator cuff repair. Oh, uh, I have a low back. Didn't know that. I wonder what I'm going to do there. And you basically just take the shotgun approach. Well, I'll just wait till it comes and we'll figure it out. Or, uh, oh, I haven't seen that person in three weeks. Hmm. I wonder how they've been. Versus the opposite is, ooh, okay, I know my total knee had these complications, this, this, and this. They're at week four. They should be at this point, week seven, week eight. Uh, in the next three weeks, they should be going back to walking or whatever it is, impact or whatever, whatever their hobby is. Uh, and that low back, ooh, okay, I, I understand. I, that person referred, oh, they, they're only three weeks out from the back injury and they want to get into tennis or whatever it is. You're like, oh, I can kind of map that out. I know what happens. I'm going to do this and this and this. And then the person I haven't seen in a couple weeks, ah, oh, they should be right on point to be able to play soccer this weekend. That's a, that's no, not a, let's see how it goes PT. That's like, I've planned it out. I've mapped it out. That's a true sports PT. And uh, that was real. So I really appreciated that. The, one of the most established clinicians in the room acknowledged that. And so again, if you're a student or a new grad, you're still doing okay. And if you're established and you feel that way, it's okay. You just got to fix it. It's like, what's, what's the next level uh, to set you up for success? Uh, number two, or sorry, number four, uh, you need a roadmap. <clears throat> I explained to the attendees, uh, phenomenal group, by the way, uh, Saturday night power hour was amazing. Um, uh, uh, cold brew in the morning was just a good opportunity. Just network, meet people. I actually didn't realize how many people were connected and they didn't either. We saw people who had rock climbed together uh, years ago and uh, connected again. So it was amazing to see, uh, but you need a roadmap. And I explained that like a patient or an athlete, if you have an athlete who starts a football season and first thing the coach does is says, Hey, uh, here's practice. Here's pads. This is when you're going to get pads. This is our preseason game. This is our first game. This is our uh, seventh game, eighth game. This is our playoffs. And here's the championship, right? And so you look at the schedule and you're like, all right, I got 13 weeks, 14 weeks to figure this out because I have a championship game potential up here. So by week three, we have to be doing this. By week six, we have to be doing this. By week 10, we should be in the playoffs and we have to execute every single time. And you have a map. And so the athlete's like, oh, that's the schedule. What's the schedule for the year? When a patient or an athlete comes in, do you have that? Do you have that schedule for them? Do you have that ready for them to see what the map look like, looks like? And you don't. And a lot of the PTs and PT students had no idea how important critical it was. Now, I call it a roadmap. They just need a journey. 
to know what that looks like, but you actually have to know it. So are you prepared to be able to manage somebody and say, you know what, I know you have knee pain. It's going to take you four weeks to get out of that, 12 weeks to get back to running, 18 weeks to be able to get back to your marathon training. And, you know, at month four, you actually get really get back to full training and be able to compete in June for the San Diego Rock and Roll Marathon, whatever it is. And that sounds really good. But right now, as a listener, can you map that out? Do you know what month one would be for, let's say, uh, Achilles tendonitis? Um, it's minor flare up and they have a marathon in four months. What adjustments would you need to make to their training? What can and can't they do? Can they do heels? Till when? When can they initiate heels again? Are they on flat ground? What's their speed? Are they doing distance runs, intervals? How long? And when do they go back to their full training? If you can't map that out, that's what we did. That's literally what we did at this course is map out timelines. How critical that is to the soft tissue healing and then knowing what flare-ups are. You're basically calling potential flare-ups and saying, ah, it could hit me at week four or six. It'll delay their, pro their problems, but I can, I can catch them up at 10, 11. By week 12, 14, I'll have them okay. That confidence. There was one word that resonated with all the entire uh, group, confidence. I want the confidence to be able to take an athlete and manage them acutely. I want the confidence to diagnose or pro get the prognosis or assess acute injuries. I want the confidence to know I'm on the right track. That's really what it came down to. And if you're confident you're on the right track, your patient's going to be confident that they're on the right track. But if you don't have that confidence, they have all, they lost, they lose it all. And uh, the track and field coach, Chris uh, was there and he um, brought up a good point. He's like, I treat at the elite level. And the one thing that, you know, really sets people up for success is a professional athlete wants one thing, confidence from the provider. They'll just stare at you. If they're, pro, uh, they're a pro athlete, you're not the first person they've ever seen. You're not the 10th person. You're probably like the 100th to 200th clinician that they've ever seen. And they can tell us by the, the difference between, they'll just look in your eyes and be like, does he or she know what they're talking about? They're not confident. And they'll lose all trust. So you have to have that confidence. So confidence is king when it comes to treating acute injuries. But that comes from knowing the timeline, which means you have to have the roadmap, which means you can't, you won't show imposter syndrome. Many, many levels to this. Uh, and if this fires you up, I'm glad. It, it, uh, it was amazing. Um, you have to be prepared. And what that means is you can't just show up to work. You can't be a let's just see how it goes type of a PT. You actually on the weekends or at night or on your breaks actually have to plan. That means you actually have to look at your, your patient list or maybe you have like three or four problem child, like hard clients, hard, hard patients that you want to be able to take on to the next level. And they're just giving you a little trouble. They're just, they're not healing at the same rate. So you actually have to create a map on the back end, meaning Saturday and Sunday on a whiteboard or a piece of paper, scribble out what their goal is, run in three weeks and the injury timeline, they're three weeks out from injury. So you have six total weeks since injury. Is it possible to get back to running and then work backwards? So at week five, what would need to happen for them to get back to full training? Well, they have to be able to do intervals on hills and do all this other stuff. At week four, what needs to happen? Uh, they have to be able to like, you know, put impact on their Achilles or their ankle uh, without pain. Okay, what needs to happen before that? Well, they have to be pain-free with ADLs. Okay, perfect. There's your map. Now tell them. In one week, you need to be pain-free with ADLs. At week, in two weeks, you have to have, be able to do uh, running uh, pain-free linearly. After that, you have to be able to do hills and all these other things pain-free. And they're like, oh, just makes sense. And then this was a big point, share the responsibility, meaning it's also the patient and athlete's responsibility to take on ownership of the rehab. And we all agreed on that. We're like, yeah, it's, it's, it's their fault, or excuse me, it's their responsibility. And then I was like, do you ever communicate that to them, that they need to do it? And if they don't, their outcomes will change based on their actions. And no one raised their hand because we're hesitant because we take on all the responsibility as providers. We do that 
instinctively, inherently, we're like, uh, it's okay, I'll just do it. I'll do, I'll do it real quick. I, I'll take it on. It's okay. I don't, they don't have to know. I'll just, I'll work harder. <laughs> I'll work harder. Meaning you're not going to plan. You're just going to hope that things go better. I'm just going to go less aggressive. I'm just going to tell them it's going to take longer to rest. The reason why people have to rest is because we don't know answers a lot of times. The reason why you tell them to rest because you really don't, you're buying time. You're like, I, I just don't know what the best thing to do is right now. And that absolute rest is very rare. Unless it's like a fracture or something broken, but you can still do upper body work or you can still do the lower half. Can you go in the water? I mean, there's always something you can do. So complete rest has to be a very planned recommendation. So you, you have to, you have to be, uh, you have to be prepared, meaning on the weekends, you got to put in the time. You need a roadmap, avoid imposter syndrome. You have to be prepared, share the responsibility. And timelines are king when it comes to uh, setting plans of care. Meaning if you're a student in your first year of PT school, you're going to learn basic skill set and the basic uh, or advanced anatomy and neurological uh, conditions. Uh, you're going to learn maybe pharmaceutical, uh, pharmacology. Uh, maybe in the next year, you're going to do internships, some type of immersion or integration. And on the last year, you're going to do clinical rotations to completely put yourself in a position where you're actually fully immersed in everything. You saw what that timeline is, and then you have to take your exam. So guess what? If you were to take your exam, you work backwards, and you're like, okay, what? Well, at third year, they have to be they have to have very competent. They have to pass all their rotations. At year two, you have to be able to do this uh, and have these higher level uh, exams to, and do half immersion and be able to do well in that. In the first year, let's just work on the fundamentals and work on memory-based stuff, uh, education, base level of education. That's called a timeline. They have to move backwards. One of, the concept, one of the concepts I covered is you always work backwards, always work backwards. I know that's a, I don't like to use absolutes very often, but you always work backwards. So if somebody has an injury, what's the goal? What's a, does it, what is the general timeline for them to get back? Eight to 10 weeks, perfect. What needs to happen at week seven, six, five, four, three, two, to get to that point? PTs, we normally say, oh, for the next two weeks, let's just try range of motion and a little bit of balance. and. Don't go too aggressive because um, you don't want to mess it up. And uh, when you come back in two weeks, I'll give you more. I'll give you more stuff. And they're like, okay, sounds great. And then you're like, oh, it's been two weeks. Um, I showed up late to work and I, mm, let me see. Oh, we'll just go another two more weeks of lighter stuff because I don't want to mess this up. And then their injury will get better. But there was zero plan, zero timeline, zero preparation. That was just hope. That's literally what we call a let's see how it goes to PT. And I think that works to a certain extent, um, but for those who are trying to make a difference in their community, a difference in the patient population that they serve, a difference in their professional career, you're not okay with being a, let's just see how it goes PTs. That, that's why you take courses like this. Cause you're like, I'm looking for something different. Like, I'm just tired of like, just doing the basic stuff. I, I feel like I don't have direction. I don't have like a map for myself. That's the truth. You don't have a map for yourself. What you do is you think you have a map for your patients, but do you get to a certain point where it becomes challenging? Now you're dealing with acute injuries. You can't take that approach. So I said, um, could PT school have set you up for failure? Uh, excuse me. Could PT school have set you up for failure when it came to acute injury management? Yeah. It taught you to be very conservative, very minimal planning, and very little exposure to acute injury management. So actually treating acute injuries is almost the opposite of orthopedic care. You stabilize early, you don't move them, you brace them, you tape them, you gradually work uh, into their uh, healing phases, but you gotta work backwards. Four, three, two, one. When's the inflammatory phase, proliferative phase, Remodeling phase. When would you brace them? When would you tape them? When would you wean them? When would you go back into sport? That's what we learned. And it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. And I, I had to share it with um, everyone because this group of people who just went through it, uh, it's an inspiration. Uh, I, wish, I wish 
I was in their shoes as a third year, first year, second, third year, because the concepts they grasped were so high level. It allowed that one person said, this is going to change the way I treat on Monday. You know how amazing that feels? They said, I've taken courses, but this one, it like it, it's a game. The one thing you taught me was the timelines. He's like, that's what I'm going to change tomorrow. It's going to give you a game choice. Like I have, I have two patients I already can do it with. And you just work backwards. It's not a skill. It's not like something tangible that you like work on with a patient. What it is, is changing your framework on how you approach before you see the patient. And that way you're ready to set the timeline. So you set the patient up for success. And then you can add in all the great things you want to do in manual work or soft tissue or cupping or nothing or exercises, whatever you want to do. But the framework is there and it sets them up for success. So that's what we did this weekend. And uh, I've uh, officially lost a little bit of my voice if you can't hear. But ultimately, um, I have had a blast and um, I'm excited. Uh, for those who don't know, I have, I think I have five courses this year sign, uh, registered um, for the year. Uh, I have one uh, next month. I have a uh, management of the barbell athlete, April 23rd and 24th in San Diego. I'm um, excited to see people there. Uh, I just had the sports PT accelerator. I have um, strength and conditioning in the summer. I have a barbell course in October, and then I have a manual therapy course in September. So put those on your calendars. Um, I'll be sharing more information um, down the line, but um, I, I appreciate every one of you listeners, and um, I'm excited to see you guys in the course, you guys and girls in the, in the courses. Um, a big thing for me is changing healthcare and our P PT profession. And um, yesterday's course was a big part um, to kickstart that process. And having uh, you guys as part of my community, uh, I'm excited to see your personal path and setting a roadmap, helping you guys set a roadmap instead of let's just see how it goes, my professional career too. And I hope that change changes the way that you view what you're about to do for this planet and your community. Because uh, if you have a map, you're going to be successful. And that's what I'm excited to have uh, and help you uh, develop. So uh, with that, uh, it was a great podcast I had to share. So um, I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, I am excited to get my uh, voice back <laughs> and uh, ready to conquer the week. So I hope you guys are uh, staying healthy and uh, staying active and uh, living, uh, living life. Okay. All right. I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care.